gee. I guess it's great that my friends at Musical Theater Village are doing Footloose again after four years. But, on the other hand, it's starting to bring back memories from when I blogged the trashy 2011 remake. Also, I sure wish my sister could help me. Okay, computer, what do you have in mind? Hmm. That sounds like an excellent idea. And I know just the movie to start with. Cue the logo. Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. Well everyone, today we begin a very special marathon that I've been thinking about doing for a while. An 80's movie marathon, where I'll be blogging classic films that came from that bygone era. Now, as everyone knows, the 1980's was a very interesting decade. Fantasy, sci-fi, and slasher films were in their a day. Pop music, techno, and hip-hop were making their mark in the music industry. Nintendo reinvented the standard art for video games. And of course, the 80s was known as the golden age of cartoons. And speaking of cartoons, we're going to start my 80s movie marathon by looking at a mystery movie which features classic cartoon characters. Released on June 22nd, 1988, the movie is Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Now let's get started. A famous tune known as Roger Rabbit has life easy until he discovers that his wife, Jessica Rabbit, is having fun with Marvin Acme, the gag king. Then, things take a turn for the worst for Roger, when he is accused of murdering Mr. Acme. Roger turns to a down-and-out detective named Eddie Valiant, who has a vendetta for tunes. He helps Roger, against his own will, escape from an uncompromising Judge Doom, and even tries to clear Roger's name. In order to do this, he must travel all over Los Angeles and even into Toontown. So, what do I think of this movie? Well, let me just make this perfectly clear. This is not a kid's movie. There's some crude humor, adult language, and jokes that I can't believe made it into a PG-rated movie. And I love every bit of it. But, to further explain why I enjoy the movie, Let's move on to Mustang Notes. The movie is based on Gary K. Wolfe's 1981 novel, Who Censored Roger Rabbit? Walt Disney Pictures purchased the film rights for Who Framed Roger Rabbit's story in 1981. Jeffrey Price and Peter S. Seaman wrote two drafts of the script before Disney brought in executive producer Steven Spielberg and his production company, Amblem Entertainment. Robert Demeckis was brought on to direct the movie, and Canadian animator Richard Williams, whom I talked about while blogging The Thief and the Cobbler, was hired to supervise the animation sequences. Production was moved from Los Angeles to Elstray Studios in England to accommodate Williams and his group of animators. While filming the movie, the production budget began to rapidly expand, and the shooting schedule ran longer than expected. Disney released the movie through its Touchstone Pictures division on June 22, 1988. To critical and commercial success, and, of course, the movie became a blockbuster. The film brought a 
renewed interest in the golden age of American animation, spearheading modern American animation and the Disney Renaissance. In 2016, the movie was selected for preservation in the United States National Film Registry by the Library of Congress. In my opinion, the way the movie captures 1940s Los Angeles is very neat, and I really love how Toontown is animated in this movie. And since I've been to Disneyland's Toontown before I saw this movie on home media, I still think that Toontown looks very zany. Plus, I love the many different cartoon characters that cameo in this movie. Characters from Disney, Warner Brothers, Paramount, and Universal. And I like the interaction between the tunes and the live action. Heck, it's ten times better than Ralph Bakshi's Cool World. Also, I think this movie has an interesting and engaging detective story with some elements that can be very sympathetic. What's more, some of my favorite scenes in this movie include the part where Donald and Daffy Duck perform the Hungarian Rhapsody at the Ink and Paint Club, the scene where we see a saxophone player playing the Sorcerer's Apprentice music while the brooms are sweeping around the Maroon Cartoon Studio, and I like the chase scenes between the Tomb Patrol and our main heroes. So, I guess that wraps up Mustang Notes. So, let's move on to the cast. Our main character, Eddie Valiant, is played by the late Bob Hoskins, who got to be in the Super Mario Brothers movie, Balto, Son of the Mask, and of course Robert Zemeckis' Christmas Carol. At first, due to Eddie's drunken behavior and his hatred towards tunes, I didn't really like him that much, but after hearing his backstory on what happened to his brother, it made me feel really bad for him. Plus, Eddie becomes a better character as the film progresses. Also, while he's helping to clear Roger's name, he's on a hunt for Marvin Acme's will. Plus, I really like that dance that Eddie does to defeat the Tomb Patrol. Next we have our title character, Roger Rabbit, voiced by Charles Flesher. whom I've talked about in my blog of We're Back, A Dinosaur Story. In my opinion, Roger is the funniest character in the movie, and I think he's absolutely fun to listen to, especially with how he talks. Some of my favorite scenes that Roger is involved with is when he, well, does like, when he whistles like a steam train after drinking alcohol, and when he dances to the merry-go-round Broken Down song. Next we have Roger's wife, Jessica Rabbit, voiced by Kathleen Turner, who got to be in A Simple Wish, Monster House, and the Russian animated Snow Queen movie. To me, Jessica is a lucky woman to have a cartoon rabbit as a husband. And I think she's, well, <clears throat> let's just say she's very pretty and leave it that. <clears throat> also, I think Jessica can be very tough. What's more, I think Jessica is a wonderful singer and... I think she could be a great role model for such characters like Rapunzel from Tangled due to the fact that Jessica whacked Roger with a frying pan, or Hortensia due to Jessica calling her husband Honey Bunny. 
Also, I like the part where Jessica saves Eddie in an alleyway by shooting Judge Doom's shadow. Plus, I just can't believe that Jessica keeps a bear trap in her dress. Next we come to Benny the Toon Cap, also voiced by Charles Flesher. Benny is my second favorite character in the movie, next to Roger. I love the scene where Benny drives Eddie and Roger to a movie theater to escape from the Toon Patrol. And I like the part where he opens his door for Jessica. Plus, I just love driving Benny whenever I go to Roger Rabbit's ride at Disneyland. I mean, that ride is really fun. Next up is Roger's co-star, Baby Herman, voiced by Lou Hirsch. Baby Herman is very impatient and irritable, as shown when Roger messes up during their act at the beginning of the movie. Despite this, he cares about Roger and considers him a good friend. Baby Herman also claims that Roger is innocent when he is framed for the death of Marvin Acme. I really like the scene where Herman tells Eddie that Acme promised to entrust Toontown to the Toons in his will, and gave his solid oath that he would upon his death. Next we have Eddie's girlfriend, Dolores, played by Joanna Cassidy. Dolores is a waitress at the Pacific Electric Red Car Trolley Terminal Bar. In my opinion, while Dolores doesn't have that many scenes, she makes a decent supporting character, like when she helps Eddie hide Roger, and of course when she warns Eddie that Cloverleaf Industries had placed the highest bid for Toontown and will acquire it at midnight if Acme's will fails to show up by then. Next we come to R.K. Maroon, the head of Maroon Cartoon Studios, played by Alan Tilburn. This guy hired Eddie to take a few photographs of Jessica. Later in the movie, before Maroon was shot, he tells Eddie that he planned to sell his studio, but Cloverleaf wouldn't buy his property unless Acme sold them his, and says that Acme wouldn't sell. So, of course, Maroon would blackmail Acme with pictures of both him and Jessica. And, of course, that's all there is to it. Next, we have the owner of Toontown and Gag King, Marvin Acme played by Stubby K. And, sadly, this was the last movie Stubby acted in before his death. Now, Acme is also something of a prankster, as he likes to play harmless practical jokes on people, like when he uses his hand buzzer on Eddie. Next, we have our main villain, Judge Doom played by Christopher Lloyd, best known from the Back to the Future trilogy, DuckTales the Movie, The Page Master, Don Bluth's Anastasia, and R.L. Stein's Haunted Lighthouse. Now, despite presiding over a city of tunes, he is totally without mirth and passes capital punishment on tunes who break the law, placing them in a chemical vat of turpentine, acetone, and benzene, essentially known as oil, paint thinner, and film dissolver, which he calls the dip. This concoction melts tunes, which permanently kills them, which Doom demonstrates when he kills off a clown's shoe. Now, in my opinion, Doom is a character where his presence can strike fear into anybody. However, his hunt for Roger isn't the only thing he's up to. 
You see, during the movie, he used his company, Cloverleaf, to acquire the Pacific Electric Railway so he could dismantle it in order for his company to plan and construct a network of large highways known as freeways. Plus, Doom murders Acme Corporation owner Marvin Acme and Maroon Cartoon Studio owner R.K. Maroon in an attempt to take control of Toontown in order to destroy it, as Toontown stands directly in the path of his proposed freeway. However, during the ending climax, Doom is revealed to not only be a tune himself, but as a raging, killing psychopath who can turn his hand into any animated weapon he wants. Plus, his cartoon look is ten times more menacing with his piercing red eyes and a uncomfortably high squeaky voice provided by Corey Burton. I mean, gee. I know Corey Burton is talented with his ghost host, Captain Hook, Gus, or Yen Sid voices, but his high-pitched chipmunk voice for Doom takes the cake. Also, to me, whoever drew Doom must have been a mentally insane animator. Finally, we have Judge Doom's henchmen, the Toon Patrol, who are all cartoon weasels led by Smarty, voiced by David Lander. These guys are the law enforcers of Toontown, although they behave less like law enforcers and more like gangsters and crooks due to their behaviors. To me, while these guys are very sinister and threatening, they can be very silly at times. Speaking of which, they have a habit of laughing, which is really bad for them, because if they can't stop laughing, they'll die. Also, by looking at the weasels, they kind of remind me of Mr. Winky's weasels from the adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. And, I think this movie influenced Disney to give Pete weasel guards in the Prince and the Pauper short. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, Who Framed Roger Rabbit is a very interesting and engaging movie to come from the 80s. And I think the setting in 1940s Los Angeles is great. The movie has a great detective story. Some parts of the movie are thought-provoking. The cartoon cameos are amazing, as well as the animation for Toontown. The main character, Eddie, is a relatable guy, and Roger Rabbit is zany and hilarious. His wife, Jessica, is very pretty, despite being drawn bad. Benny is a great toon cab. And, of course, the villain, Judge Doom, is very twisted and psychotic. Lastly, as mentioned earlier, this is not a kid's movie. There is some adult language, crude humor, and several moments can be very inappropriate for younger viewers. So, if you guys want to have your kids watch this movie, then just make sure you watch it with them. And don't worry, you'll all have a great time with it. So, I give this movie a 98% out of 100. Well, that's it for today, everyone. Be sure to join me again for my next blog as we move away from Touchstone and on to MGM, where we look into Don Bluth's first animated movie, Mustang Power.